welcome back to the channel. Hey, I'm Ron with Ideal Industries. In this segment, I'd like to talk to you about Ideal's VDV Pro Tester. And actually, our 33-700 kit actually is what it is here. And, you know, if you do basic phone wiring or data wiring or coaxial cable wiring, uh, you know, this is kind of the minimal tester you might want to go out and buy because you're going to be able to do all three of those. Now, the kit comes, uh, obviously, with a nice little carrying case here. And the kit's got all the little adapters and little wires you'd need in order to, again, test on all these different kind of cables. And the main unit just pops out here on the little sleeve there. And when you uh, look at the bottom, the tester's got a remote that just slides at the bottom. And that remote will get, will get plugged into an outlet in a room, a uh, cable jack, uh, could be a, a phone jack or data jack out there. And then the other end of that cable will then get wired into the top of this tester. And that might be in another room or if it's a, just a patch cord, uh, it could be just a couple feet long. Okay. And uh, this test will do all, all the basic tests you're looking for a tester to do. And a coax is going to look for uh, opens and shorts and coax. Uh, it uh, will also uh, look for USOC wiring and phone circuits out there. And in data networking, it'll look for 568A or 568B wiring schemes and look for opens and shorts and miswires, reversals, and split pairs as well. Hey, the tester also does length and blinks a hub, so it's a great little tester. So let's take a close-up view, and I'll step you through how to use it. Here we're taking a close-up view of what's in the VDV tester kit when you buy one. And when you get here is the main unit of the uh, tester itself. The remote also comes with it, and that normally stores right here in the bottom of the tester for easy storage. And you'll find it has a coax, a uh, phone, and a uh, Category 5E uh, STP uh, jack. We could test either UTP or STP cables. The top of the unit also has a uh, data jack, a uh, coax, and a phone port on the top. And the kit comes with a nice carrying case here to keep it all together. Uh, you get a couple extra patch cords here for your data networking testing. Uh, you get some RJ11 uh, patch cords for phone testing. These two little adapters are for coax, for adapting from F connectors to uh, BNCs and F connectors to RCAs. So if you're working with coax that has either an RCA or a BNC connector on the end of it, you can still pro uh, work with it. And then these two alligator adapter clips here are, one's RJ11 to a alligator clip and one's RJ45 to an alligator clip. So if you're working with, uh, you know, wire with no connectors on the end of it, just got bare conductors, you can uh, trace and, and uh, test wiring as well. So let's take a look at uh, how we use this kit to actually test some cables. When you look at the face of the VDV uh, Pro Tester, what you'll find out is some buttons here, some mode and select and some arrow keys up and down here. And uh, you'll find that any of these buttons will actually turn the tester on. So we'll push this one over here. And now the tester has come on, and it is, uh, say, data testing, and it's trying to run a data test. And it says no cable here because uh, there is no cable plugged into the end of the tester here. Now, uh, you'll notice the tester has a nice backlight on it, and uh, we can turn that on and off. We care to. We're trying to conserve energy by holding down the select button here, and it will turn it off. And if we uh, hold down the select button one more time, it would actually toggle it back on there for us, okay? And uh, the, when you, again, it's trying to do a data test here, and you'll notice the tester has a mode button here, and there's many modes to it, so let's go ahead and push that button once, and the first thing it goes into is an off setting. And if we hit select, it would turn the tester off, so we, we obviously don't want to do that. So let's hit it one more time, and it goes into data testing, if we're going to test for category cables for those uh, A and B features. And um, we're going to look at one more time, it goes into voice or telephone testing, we can hit one more time when we get into uh, uh, video testing for coaxial cables and check for opens and shorts and coax. Uh, then it does length, and it will actually measure the length of the cables if we need it to. And then we can move into the tone setting here, which is the tester actually has a tone generator built into it for tracing of wires. And then there's a hub blinking feature as well, and we can actually identify a port on a hub that the tester might be plugged into the other end of a cable with. Okay. And then lastly, gets into the setup feature, and let's take a look at this, and we'll hit select here to identify this. And uh, the first thing the tester says there is pass beep on, and the tester will make an audible sound if it passes a cable. And if you would like to turn that off, you can do that by pushing down uh, the select button here, and it would turn it off. And if we hit the select button one more time, it turns it back on, and normally you're probably going to want it on. The next feature here is the unit of measurement, and we can set it for uh, footage or into the metric system, either one, by, again, by hitting the select button. The next function here is uh, shield, unshielded or shielded cables, and normally we're doing unshielded cables, but if you wanted to go shielded, you could. And the last feature here is split on, and the tester will do what's called a split pair test on cabling. It's one of the five required tests to do on the cable. And 
in how it does that split pair test, it needs to see a minimal amount of cable, usually about a foot or two at a minimum. And there'll be times when maybe you're doing a small patch cord and uh, it's giving you that split pair of test when there really is none. Uh, so then maybe use a longer patch cord. But we could turn that feature off if, on the tester if we care to. But normally you want to leave it on, okay? Because, uh, you know, most longer cables, you, you want to check for that split pair, which is definitely something to be looking for as well. And then we pass, push it one more time, it goes back into that pass beep on, okay? So uh, that's the tester and all the different functions in it. And next, I'm going to show you how to actually use that tester to make some measurements out there. If you're going to use a VDV to test data circuits, so one of the things we might do is test a, like a patch cable. So I'm going to take a, a RG45 and plug it in the top of the tester here. And this is one end of a patch cord. And I've got the other end of this patch cord over here. And I'm going to plug that, in, the remote, in the bottom of it. Okay. And uh, now I'm going to test this patch cord, and if I hit, again, any button will turn the tester on. It'll go right into the data testing mode, and you notice it says pass, it says data testing, it's not seen any shield uh, in the cabling. And you'll see two rows of numbers, and they both match. So the top row is what it should be, bottom row is what it actually, uh, it actually has, and if they match it, of course, it says pass. Now you'll hear it beeping as well, indicating that it's passing the cable. It, sees it, it shows it sees ID number one, the first remote that came with the tester, and you can get up to eight remotes with the tester. And it's indicating the, the length of the cable I'm testing as well at about 15 and a half feet there. Okay? So uh, now if we wanted to see what a bad test looked like, let's disconnect that cable. And I'm going to plug another cable into the uh, remote unit here in the bottom. Okay? And on the uh, tester, I'm going to take a, a patch cord, plug it into a wall plate here, okay? And we'll test this cable going into that wall plate, and I'm going to plug the other end of that into the other end of my tester here. Now, the test has uh, already actually made the test for us. In this case, it's failed the test. And again, we're doing data testing, no shield, but you see, notice the two rows of numbers now have changed. Again, the top row is what it's supposed to be, and the bottom row is what you actually have. And the bottom row, you'll see one, two's not lit up. It says right there, open in one and two. Then it also says miswire in three, six, and seven, and eight. And sure enough, I look over here, three and seven are, are, are in the wrong spots, six and eight in the wrong spots, and of course, the seven and eight are reversed as well there, so or miswired, I should say. So that's an indication of a bad cable. And uh, you'll see the tester is actually pretty simple to uh, uh, read and figure out what it's trying to tell you. And uh, we'll move on to phone, phone testing next. If we're going to use the VDV to, Pro to uh, test for phone circuits, one of the first things I'm going to do is turn the tester on and hit and any button again turns it on. And you'll notice it's doing, trying to do data testing, so we're going to move it over to uh, hit the, uh, the mode button here until we hear uh, or see voice there for phone testing. Hit select. And now it's trying to do some phone testing on the cabling, and since there is no cable plugged into the top of the tester, it tells me there's no cable. Now, if I'm going to test a piece of cable, and I'm going to take a known patch cord here, and plug it in the top of the tester here, okay? And then I'm going to take the other end of that cable and uh, plug it into my remote. Now, the remote has an RJ11 port on it right there, and we could very simply uh, plug a the uh, little RJ11 extension cord on that and plug it right into a phone jack if we wanted to plug right into a phone jack. But in this case, we're going to do a patch cord. So I'm going to plug the other end of this cable into the patch cord. And you'll notice the tester is starting to do the test on a cable. And uh, it says uh, fail here. Now, that may or may not be bad. Uh, the two rows, when you look at the two rows numbers, remember the top row is what it's supposed to be and the bottom row is what it actually is. And you see three fours lit up on both the top and the bottom. But it's indicating down here there's an open in uh, pairs one and six and pins two and five, which are the, the two pairs here. And, uh, you know, telephone wire, uh, this tester is always going to look for six pins, Okay. However, when you buy telephone wire, you can buy it with just two wires in it, like this cable has in it, and it's for exactly one phone line. Uh, if you uh, get uh, uh, four lights light up, indicating the cable's got four wires in it, it's for two phone lines, and so two and five would be lit up there. And then if there were six pairs in the cabling, it would light up all six of them here. So even though that says fail, if I've just got an extension cord for a single line phone, uh, this might actually indicate that that's good, okay? Now I'm gonna take another uh, patch cord and plug it into the tester. And again, I'm going to plug one end in, uh, the remote into one end of it and plug the other end into the top of the tester. Okay. And um, now I'm going to take another test. Now, in this case here, this is a cable that is what we call reverse wired. And that might also be good. And when, again, you look at older telephone lines or older phones themselves, old analog phones, 
many cases, we had to reverse wire the patch cord. So uh, older analog phones required that the patch cord be miswired like this, and this actually would indicate a good cable. Uh, you'll find newer digital phones are not polarity sensitive, and they wouldn't care if it was straight through wired or reverse wired. But since the tester sees a reversal here, um, it's going to say fail on us, okay? Plus, it sees an open in pins uh, 1 and 6 in it, okay? But in many cases, this is actually what you'd want to see in the cabling, okay? Now, I'll give you an example <clears throat> of a straight-through wired one where we still have uh, four pins in the cabling. And, uh, and now in this patch cord here, it's what we call straight-through wired, okay? And now it's going to run those tests, and it still says fail. And it's because it's not seeing six pins. And But you'll see the two rows of numbers match. And for a lot of your phones, that's what you want to see today. And if I hit the select button, I can turn my backlight back on there. There you go. And so it's indicating a straight-through wired uh, cord. And again, newer digital phones, this should work fine. Okay. Now, lastly, if I put a uh, cable into the remote that has six pins in it, and plug the other end of that into the top of the tester here. It's now going to uh, look at a cable that's got all six wires in it, and they match both rows, pass, one through six. You hear it beeping, indicating that uh, it sees a good cable. Okay, we're about three foot in length there. And uh, so that would make the actual tester say pass. So in phone testing, you might be looking for one of any of those, depending on the phone you have and the wiring you have. So hope that helped. Uh, we'll move on to video next. Next up, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, testing coaxial cables for uh, opens and shorts. And that's basically what the tester does for you. So if I turn the tester on and it lights up and it gets into that data function, I'm going to hit that uh, mode button until we get to video. And when I hit video, I'll hit the select button there. And now it's doing a test uh, and looking for a coaxial cable. And you'll see it says fail and it says open because I basically don't have anything plugged into the top of the tester. Now on the uh, tester there, I can plug a cable into the end of it. Okay, I'm going to take this piece of coax here and plug that into the end there. Tighten her down. And uh, what I can do on the other side here is the remote here has a, uh, uh, a coax insert that we can pull out the bottom of it. And I'm going to plug that into a wall plate over here that's got the other end of this coax plugged into it. Okay, And then we're going to run a test on this piece of coax. And uh, you'll see the tester is saying pass. Uh, it is saying doing video. And it sees what we call the brown remote out here on the other end. And you can get this with up to eight remotes and identify eight different coaxial runs. And we're basically checking for opens and shorts in the cabling. And you hear the beeping noise indicating that uh, it's seeing a good cable here. So pretty simple testing on coax. And next we'll go on to uh, length of the cable. Now, if you're going to use the tester for measuring the length of a cable and you're trying to figure out if it, you know there's something wrong with it, you can plug it into an outlet someplace in a room. And if you're expected to say 50 or 60 or 100 feet and it comes back at 20 feet, well, you know, maybe there's a break in that cable. Okay. Now, if we're going to measure length of the cable, we're going to turn the tester on and it fires up and it goes into that data mode. So we're going to... Uh, switch out of that and keep the mode button until we get to length and then we'll hit select here and it will start uh, asking us what we want to measure the length of and uh, it says data is lit up right here but we've got voice and video and through the toggle buttons over here we can switch between if we're uh, testing a phone line a uh, piece of coax or in this case we're going to be testing a data cable okay and then I'm going to hit select down here and it's going to look for a data wire now, uh, it uh, is in what we call auto testing automatically, and it says zero feet there, meaning it sees no cable because there's nothing plugged into the end of the tester down here. And uh, then below it, it gives us an indication. It says 15 picofarads per foot. You know, one of the ways that this tester or the way it tests the length of a cable is through the capacitance, and it's going to measure the capacitance of the cable. Now, we know all cables have a certain capacitance per foot. And if we know that number, we can divide it into, no, into the uh, capacitance it sees and give you a, a pretty good accurate uh, length reading of, of a cable. Now, we can adjust that by raising this up and down with these little buttons here. And we can uh, change uh, that picofarad uh, pico per foot setting. Now, your instructions will give you some rough ideas of where to set this. If you want the exact number, you'll have to actually get it from the manufacturer of the cable itself. And if you happen to have a known length of cable, you could adjust this tester to match that known length by changing uh, that adjustment here. Okay. Now keep in mind, Caterer cable has a lot of twists in it, so uh, 
Uh, keep in mind the outer jacket, uh, that, that length is always uh, not quite as long as the length inside because of the twisting in the, in the pairs. But if we want to measure the length of the cable, I would take uh, one end of a cable and plug it into the remote end over here, okay? And the other end of the, of the uh, tester I'll plug into, in this case, a wall plate that's got that jack wired into it, into a, a cord, and we're going to plug that into the top of the tester over here, okay? And it's going to actually start measuring the length of the cable. Now, it's already done it. And you'll see that it is indicating a one-foot length cable. It's in auto testing, and it sees, again, that first remote out there. And, again, we're doing data over here. Now, uh, the tester will automatically give you the shortest length it sees. Because if there's an open in the cable, and you're expecting a 50-foot cable or a 100-foot cable here, well, we automatically know there's an open somewhere uh, in one of these pairs. We don't know which one it is yet, but we can actually hit the select button here. And the tester will switch over and look at just pins one and two in the cable, uh, which is that uh, green pair in uh, 560A or orange in B. But in any case, it's only one foot long, indicating that it's the pair that is actually one foot in length. And actually, I have an open in the wall plate over here, and all it sees really is the patch cord. Now, hit the select button again. It will actually look at pins three and six. Now, now the tester is saying 35 feet meaning it sees the other end of the cable, which is obviously a lot longer. And uh, if I toggle again here, uh, it will go to pins 4 and 5. And again, if the backlight goes off, just hold down the uh, select button, it goes back on. And it sees the blue pair here, 4 and 5, and it's 36 and a half feet long. And hit it one more time, it looks at pins one, 7 and 8 here. And it's uh, about uh, 35 feet long as well. And uh, uh, you can see the cables are all a little different in length. Uh, and again, that has to do with the twisting in the pairs. Now, if you uh, want to do testing on coax, we would plug coax in the top of the tester and uh, plug the other remote, the coax remote on the other end. And then you're going to want to toggle this to where it says one and two. And for coax testing, that's the pair we're looking for, the pins we're looking for to test for the center conductor and the uh, uh, shielding in, in a piece of coax cable. Okay. And if you happen to have this plugged into a uh, data circuit, and the tester sees an active network on the other end, like a, a hub or a switch, it, the tester would uh, indicate network, it, it would be indicating indicating it sees a network out there as well. So, so there you go. There's testing or length of cable on the VDV Pro. And next, we'll move on to uh, tone generation. Now, if you're going to use the VDV Pro to uh, trace cables or as a tone generator, um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to turn the tester on, and we're using it for tracing of wires. Now, um, the tester is meant for tracing wires through end-to-end, uh, -end, not through walls necessarily. And you'll find that you can trace wires that are pretty long, usually about five or 600 feet. Now, the tester is trying to do data testing, so we're going to take the mode button here and move it over to, it says, Tone. And uh, when we get it there, I'm going to now hit Select. And now the tester is going to ask you, hey, what do you want to tone out, either a data cable or a phone cable or a uh, piece of coax? And through the up and down buttons here, we can change which one that is. And then hit select if that's what we want. But what I'm going to do data, so I'm going to toggle back over to data. Then hit select button, and it's going to go right into toning a data wire for me here. Now, uh, it says here, hit the select to change the tone itself. And use the up and down arrows here to change what pair or pin you're putting a tone down. Now, this is putting a tone down, just pin one of the cable. If I hit the toggle button once, it goes to two. And I can put a tone down each individual wire in a category cable if I care to. Here it's, it's putting a tone down all eight of them. And if I hit that one more time, it'll just put a tone down just pins one and two or pair one and two. And we can do each individual pair individually. Now, it says it's in the low tone mode. And I'm going to take a piece of coax, or a category cable, I should say, and plug it into the top of this tester. And the other end of that wire, I've already stripped these conductors. And we're going to try and find out which one of these is making noise, and that should be uh, pins one and two in the cable. Now, one of the challenges you have when you're tracing cables is electrical noise nearby. These amplifier probe devices can pick up all kinds of noise from outside uh, sources. And in my little shop here, I've got a lot of lights nearby me, and some of, the, of them are these compact fluorescent lights. And uh, you can hear all that background noise as I push the button on the, on the tester. Not to mention these compact flashes, as they get closer to them, they make quite a bit of noise. So uh, that's uh, a lot of times kind of what you're dealing with sometimes out in the real world as well, because there might be some electrical noise causing interference here. But if I took the probe device and held it to each one of these individually, and uh, you'll find that I actually do get a sound on a green pair. And the others are really not giving me 
any sound at all, okay? Now, I could change this sound as Tester's making by hitting the select button, and you know, it'll go from low to, to high tone. And now this Tester is putting out a little higher pitched tone as I put it next to the green one, okay? And again, the others are really giving me nothing, okay? So the green pair is pin one and two in the K one, okay? Now, uh, I could, if I wanted to, uh, toggle to the next sound, it's, uh, and it's kind of a, what we call a wobbly sound. And again, the other pairs are really not giving me near as loud of a sound, and you're, you're looking for the loudest sounding pair, okay? And the last one is a, sec a fourth tone, and it's putting out a slightly different wobbly sound. And again, the others are not giving me anything, okay? Now my backlight went off, so I'm going to turn my backlight back on by holding that select button down. And I'm going to change what pair I'm going to do now. I'm going to uh, switch this up, and let's do three and six. And now this orange pair should be singing. And sure enough is, and the other pairs are not. Okay? And again, we can identify the other end of the cable with the, this type of a tester. And if I keep uh, hitting the up and down but, uh, buttons here, I got the uh, blue pair, the brown pair. And then if I hit them all again... I can actually put a tone down all eight of them here. And so now it's putting a tone down all of them. So they all give me the same indication on the tester, okay? Now, if you're using this tester to trace for it with coax, uh, you will set this to pins one and two, and it could put a tone down. Just the center conductor or the shield, or actually both of the wires in a piece of coaxial cable. And you'll do similar things when we're tracing, uh, again, uh, phone wires. So there you have tone generation on the VDV Pro. And now let's talk about uh, the hub blinking feature of the tester. Now, if you're going to use the hub blinking feature of the VDV Pro, it's pretty simple to use. And we'll use it for, uh, actually, when we're trying to identify a cable in a room someplace, we'll plug the VDV Pro into the outlet in a room, put it in its hub blinking mode, and then we can identify which port on a hub or a switch it might be actually tied into. So we'll do that by turning on the tester first, and any button again turns it on. And you'll see we're in that data mode, so we're going to hit this mode button until we get to that hub blinking feature to it. And uh, there you go. Oh, don't one more, I think. And we'll hit the select button to get into that mode. Okay, now we're in that mode. It's in the test mode, as it indicates. And uh, then we can plug, really, a cable uh, into one end of the tester. And I'll take a patch port here and plug it into uh, that tester. And the other end of that cable could be plugged right into a wall plate if we we're trying to trace the wires again in the wall. Or in this case, all I'm going to actually do is plug this other end of this patch cord into the other half of this uh, Leviton little router I've got here in my hand. And let's plug it into number two here. And uh, now the tester should be putting a, a signal out that will turn the light on in the front of this uh, little router device. And uh, sure enough, you see the power lights on, uh, and it's it's blinking on number two, indicating that I am plugged into the second port on the uh, router itself. And that's a nice feature we can use when we're trying to identify certain uh, cables back at a router or switch someplace in a, a panel. So that's the nice hub blinking feature of the tester. And uh, thanks for coming to another segment. I really appreciate it. You know, my name is Ron, and I'll plan on seeing you next time.